B vitamins are important for nerve health and function. Therefore, people with CMT should take B vitamins as a supplement. Have you heard this statement? Me too, a hundred times, even from doctors. But today I'm going to tell you what's wrong with this logic. Let's go. Hi everyone, my name is Larissa and today I'm going to talk about if there is any scientific evidence supporting the beneficial effect of taking any of the vitamin B as a supplement for people with CMT. Okay, first of all, there are eight B vitamins which are collectively known as B complex vitamins. Vitamin B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B7, B9 and B12. Have you noticed that some numbers are missing, for example, B4 and B8? Well, the reason is historical. B vitamins were originally thought to be one single compound because of their common presence in the same foods and their similar functions in cellular processes, such as energy metabolism. But as scientists first started discovering more, they realized that no, actually, there are several compounds and they call them B vitamins because vitamin A had been already discovered. So they were labeled with the letter B following by the numerical designation B1, B2, B3 and so on. Over time, some substances initially thought to be a part of B complex were declassified. Therefore, B4, B8, B10 and B11 are no longer a part of B complex. Now, in the context of CMT, the following B vitamins are mostly discussed because they are particularly important for nerve function. Vitamin B1, B6 and B12. But the fact that these vitamins are important for the nerve function doesn't mean that we need an additional amount of these if we have CMT. Most types of CMT, or rather the most common types of CMT, such as uh, CMT1A or CMT2A are not caused by mutations in the genes which are involved in the synthesis or metabolism of any of the B vitamins. Therefore, adding more of any of the B vitamins is like, you know, adding fuel to the broken engine. Of course, fuel participates in the function of the engine, but if we need the oil change instead, if we just add fuel to the engine, it's not going to fix the problem. We need to change the oil instead. On the other hand, the authors of the review published in 2023 argue that supplementation with vitamin B1, B3 and B6 could be beneficial for specific types of CMT. I agree with this premise because if the mutations causing CMT are in the genes that are involved in B vitamin synthesis or metabolism, then probably by supplementing with the relevant vitamin, we might make the situation better, we might improve the symptoms. The authors mention three CMT-associated genes uh, which encode proteins involved in the metabolism of vitamin B1 and vitamin B6. So for vitamin B1, these genes are DHTKD1 and PDK3, and for vitamin B6, it's PDXK. Therefore, theoretically speaking, yes, maybe if you have a mutation in one of these genes and if you supplement with either B1 or B6, you might get some improvements. But as usual, this is just theoretical and unless it is checked, tested in people with CMT, we cannot say if it's really going to work like that. In addition, high doses of B6 are known to be neurotoxic and taking more than 200 milligrams or more a day of vitamin B6 can cause peripheral neuropathy, which of course we want to avoid because we already have an inherited peripheral neuropathy. The authors of the review also argue that vitamin B3, niacin, could be a therapeutic agent for different types of CMT. And here the logic goes as follows. Uh, vitamin B3, niacin, is an NAD3 precursor. NAD is a critical coenzyme in cellular metabolism which helps convert food into energy. And it also plays a key role in DNA repair, cellular signaling, regulating cell survival and aging processes. In fact, if you uh, are interested in the topic of aging and how to um, stay healthy and live long, uh, 
etc you might find a lot of information about NAD and a lot of discussion about NAD because this is one of the key molecules that people believe plays an important role in aging and what happens with aging is that the levels of NAD goes down so people are hypothesizing that by increasing the levels of NAD we will slow down aging or we will keep being healthy for longer again this is theoretical uh, although there are many studies now on animals and even on people uh, it's still not clear if everybody should be taking um, NAD precursors which precursor exactly people should be taking at what age how long and so on so there are so many questions and we need more and more many more studies to understand if supplementing with an NAD precursor so that NAD level goes up with age and makes sense. Because NAD decreases with age and CMT gets worth with age, the logic is that supplying NAD precursors to boost it could alleviate CMT symptoms. Uh, and in addition, actually, there was a study that showed that NAD levels are lower in patients with CMT compared to healthy control people. But this study was done only on like seven patients with CMT. We don't know uh, what types of CMT these patients had. So again, there are many, many questions uh, about whether all people with CMT show decreased level of NAD or not. What does it have to do with vitamin B3? Vi vitamin B3 is an NAD precursor. And as I said, there are many NAD precursors. We don't really know which precursor we need to take in order to boost NAD, which is the optimal one, how long, for, at what dose, and so on. So again, this is all theoretical. And yes, maybe if there are more studies, hopefully there will be more in the future, uh, that will show uh, that uh, taken some kind of precursor of NAD, maybe B3, will improve uh, symptoms of CMT. But as of now, there are no such studies, so we cannot recommend taking vitamin B3 for people with CMT of any type. Okay, so you might be wondering right now, okay, this is all theoretical, we understand that maybe it makes sense to take vitamin B1 for some people with CMT, for some types with CMT, maybe B6, maybe B3 for everybody with CMT, although again, very speculative and theoretical, but is there any clinical evidence for any vitamin B uh, to say that this might help people with CMT? Well, actually there is, and uh, there was a paper published in 2023, like a year ago in October, 2023, which tested if supplementing with biotin, which is vitamin B7, could be beneficial for people with CMT. This was an interesting study. It enrolled people with three diseases, but they were all peripheral demyelinating diseases, including CMT 1A and 1B. So here again, pay attention that this is not all CMT types. It's just these two types, CMT 1A and CMT 1B. 1A is the duplication in the gene PMP22 and uh, 1B is a point mutation in the gene MPC. So there were only five people with CMT, either 1A or 1B, and uh, people with two more diseases. These patients were given 100 milligrams biotin three times a day over a maximum of 52 weeks. The results of this study showed that actually only one patient in this cohort which had CMT, importantly, benefited as much as to reach the improvement in this primary endpoint. So as I explained in my video about uh, PXT3003, in clinical studies, there are usually primary endpoints and secondary endpoints. And primary endpoints, these are the most important points because these are the points that the researchers decide, okay, if the improvement is shown by primary endpoint, it means success. It means that our drug is successful. But secondary endpoints are also helpful because if there is improvement shown uh, by secondary endpoints, it's also given information to the researchers that this drug could be um, useful and helpful. So in this study, only one patient with CMT showed improvement by primary endpoints. 
But actually, the primary endpoints were rather difficult. They were electrophysiological results. And I don't remember any other study in which electrophysiological results were used as the primary endpoint. But anyway, the secondary endpoints were, there were several of them, and one of them was a six minute distance test. And based on this one, based on this secondary endpoint, all the participants of the study improved by taking biotin. Although these results are encouraging, of course there are many problems with the study in a way. First is that it was not a double-blind placebo-controlled. There was no control group. So we don't know if the people who improved on biotin um, did so because of the placebo effect. It could be just a placebo effect. Second of all, it's just five patients with CMT, so of course it's a small number. And third, it's actually difficult to replicate this at home because the biotin that was given to these people was of high purity and high dose. So if you look at the supplements that are available on the market, you cannot find 100 milligram capsules of biotin. And speaking of purity, also it's not easy, I think, to find the same purity as they used in the study because they used what is called pharmaceutical grade biotin, which is very high purity. Even for vitamin B7, yes, we do have some clinical data now, which is very encouraging. It is still too early to recommend taking vitamin B7 as a supplement for people with CMT, even for type 1a and type 1b, let alone all other types, which, for which we don't have any data virtually at all. As for vitamin B12, this is the last vitamin that we're going to discuss today, although of course it is important for the functioning of the nervous system, including the myelin. Again, there is virtually no data, no clinical data, no theoretical data uh, showing that uh, supplementing with vitamin B12 could be beneficial for people with CMT, unless you have a deficiency of vitamin B12. So, of course, uh, if we have a deficiency in any of the vitamins, taking it as a supplement could be beneficial. Again, it depends on your specific situation. You should be discussing it with the doctor. But for vitamin B12, uh, it is particularly important not to be deficient for the nervous system. And it's particularly easy to be deficient, especially if you're a vegan or a vegetarian. So I strongly encourage all people with CMT not to be vegans. Vegetarians could be kind of borderline, but I strongly encourage you not to be vegans. Or if you are, uh, at least have your vitamin B12 levels checked every now and then. And if they are low, if you're deficient, uh, you should consider either eating more foods fortified with vitamin B12 or supplementing it with a supplement, with a capsule tablet. This brings me to the last very important point. Um, a balanced diet is very important for people with CMT, including for getting enough vitamins, B-complex vitamins. And you can find information about a healthy, balanced diet virtually everywhere. There is so much information, but there are two websites that I particularly like. The first one is discussing Harvard um, plate and it's very easy to follow these guidelines as you can see here this is the picture summarizing what you should be eating basically what your plate should look like or my plate and if you go to the website you can even kind of calculate how many calories you need you can find uh, recipes for a balanced meal uh, you can find a lot of information for people of different age uh, of course not for people with CMT but pretty much we should be following these guidelines that are relevant for healthy people including for all kinds of vitamins so by getting enough vitamins and other good nutritional or non-nutritional compounds such polyphenols which have antioxidant properties which is also good for us um, that's it. We just need to follow a balanced, good diet. And there are tools that can help you uh, plan and understand what a healthy, balanced diet is, which I'm providing here for you. And if we are speaking particularly of B-complex vitamins, then we need uh, two big groups of foods to be included into our diet. These include animal foods such as liver, meat, um, 
preferably lean meat, uh, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy. So these are particularly high in several B vitamins, especially B12. And then we should, of course, include plant sources such as whole grains, legumes, leaf greens, nuts, and fruits, which provide a range of B vitamins, including B1, B2, B6, and folate. So folate B9 is one of the most popular B vitamins because many pregnant women take it. B9 is not particularly discussed in the context of CMT, but it's just commonly known as an important vitamin. And of course, we should be getting enough of it as well. So I hope this video explained to you why there is no really evidence um, supporting all this advice that come from uh, patients with CMT or doctors that we should be supplemented with B complex vitamins because there is no clinical data showing that it's really beneficial and again uh, my um, hunch is that most likely it really depends on which type we're talking about and which vitamin we're talking about. The take home message is that if your CMT is caused by a mutation in the gene that is involved in the synthesis or metabolism of any of the B vitamins, then probably supplementing with the relevant vitamin B is good for you. For any other type, probably supplementing with B3 could be useful, but we need more data to support that. And finally, B7 could be useful for people with demyelinating types such as 1A, 1B and all the other ones. But again, more data is needed to really recommend that. Okay, hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. I will be releasing more videos about more vitamins because I constantly get questions about this. And I am not taking any B complex vitamins. I have never taken them purposefully. I was prescribed to be given shots of vitamin B12, I think, and B6 maybe. Um, I'm not even sure, it was a long time ago, only when I was just diagnosed. And it was always an injection in my buttocks, which I hated because then the butt was hurting so much because I was getting these injections every day. Uh, and then finally, when they stopped doing that, uh, when I was like 17 or something like that, I never had this repeated again, and I had never been taking any of the B-complex vitamins ever since. I'm just trying to follow a healthy diet. I could be better on this front, but yeah, that's what I do. So I hope that these um, tips and tricks are helpful for you. Please check all the links that I provided in the description below, especially if you're struggling with understanding what a balanced diet is. Okay, bye-bye.